Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able I'm Lauren Seiler uh, for Ableton On Air. Uh, before we um, get started, we would like to say thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the support of uh, the Muslim Media Corporation, Park Sister Times, and many, many, many others, including um, uh, Albert Einstein College Medicine of the Bronx, uh, the Rose of Kennedy Center of the Bronx, uh, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, um, uh, uh, um, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many others as well. Uh, we would like to welcome Shake Musa Drame, um, uh, uh, who is uh, part of the Parkchester Times and many other things he's doing with the Muslim Media Corporation. Um, let's talk about the uh, Bronx fire um, that happened about a week and a half ago where uh, 17 families, including eight children, had passed away um, from a horrible fire and aftermath of this, uh, which um, it it was caused by a space heater and a door not working within the building. Um, and um, so why don't you talk about what happened, how it happened, and how you have been involved helping these families and vic victims and families of this, of this horrible tragedy. Thank you so much, Larry. First of all, I would like to say greetings to you and your crew and your listeners. Uh, my name is Sheikh Musa Drame. I am the founder of Muslim Media Corporation, which publishes Muslim Community Report, New York Parrots, and Parkchester Times. I am also, I would say, the full-time community organizer within the African and Muslim community in New York City. You're also so the, an imam, a Muslim imam, correct? Yes, I'm also an imam of a masjid in Co-op City. So I wear many hearts, uh, but they are all intertwined into community work. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the question concerning the fire tragedy that took place um, a Sunday, two Sundays ago. Um, I'm here to give an update 
as to what has happened and what is going on. Mm -hmm. First of all, we are mourning the deaths of 17 family members, including, as you said, eight children, among them, two-year-old boy. Mm. So this is very, very painful, very, very tragic. And unfortunately- was there, I apologize. Was there yeah. anybody with, since, uh, was there anybody with special needs that perished within this tragedy as well? That is, that is among the many, many things that we're going through um, in terms of investigating who's who, who was what, you know, who had any type of disability or special need. And soon, you know, we will get that information out publicly. But I just want to say that, unfortunately, we cannot bring back the dead. We cannot turn the clock back. However, mm -hmm. the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers took this tragedy at heart, and they have been providing all kinds of services and donations and they have done above the call of duty and the families are very very gratified I, as far you know, as far as i understand also the jewish community has uh went above and beyond with the jewish community that uh, was rocked in texas and the problems they've been having they've been helping you as well um, with donations? You know, I have been saying throughout the week, nobody wishes to be in such calamity. But if you have to be in such calamity, New York is the best place for that calamity to be for you. Mm -hmm. And I said the reason for that is because of the Jewish community. They have the infrastructure for anything humanitarian. Mm -hmm. From day one, the Jewish groups were among the first on the ground. They were among the first to provide, uh, you know, food, even halal food, you know, to the, to the affected. They have been among the largest donors financially to this cause. They have been the power behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And the families and the community and the Muslim community in general could not have been more grateful for the Jewish neighbors that we have that mm -hmm. came among all the other New Yorkers, but the prominence of Jewish services and assistance and mm -hmm. donations cannot be underst uh, understated. So, so can, you explain, can you explain a little bit about how the fire happened? It happened through a space heater. How exactly did it, uh, so people can have the backstory. How exactly did it happen? Larry, for the past 30 something years, the worst fire tragedies in New York City happened in the Bronx. And all these fire tragedies were preventable. All these deaths were preventable. The last fire tragedy, which happened Sunday, January 9, was a result of overheated space heater. No, but and just the, the other day. are used by people who are extremely impoverished conditions, mm. living in dilapidated buildings that are not being provided with the services that they are entitled to and deserve. What we're saying to our local elected officials, to our mayor and the governor and our Congress people is that these tragedies are preventable and this tragedy that happened Sunday will be the closure for such a tragedy ever be falling to such people. And we have launched a grassroots campaign in making so that such tragedy will not be repeated under any circumstances or in the, under any condition. Space heaters are used because people do not have adequate heating system in their apartments. And that, and that, that goes, will be changed that goes, that goes also for people, uh, uh, in, in um, I don't mean to bring them up, but the, it also goes to, to people who are in the New York City Housing Authority, because the New York City Housing Authority for years has not been providing adequate heat for people. When you pay rent, and I'm sure you agree with me, when you when you pay rent and you pay your utilities or utilities are included, it should include adequate heat 
Why do people have to use or conform to using a space heater? First of all, space heaters are extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. And, uh, you know, then in this building, you had a door that did not work properly. So when you have nothing that when you pay rent, but then you have things that don't work properly, things like this are going to happen. And then the other day, a couple of days after this, there was another incident on Fox Street where a, a house exploded. I don't know if you heard about that one. But that was a, that was a, 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 a gas leak. That was a different thing. So these buildings that are horribly maintained, there has to be somebody accountable. You know, you can't just say, sorry, um, this happened. This is thousands of lives. So these are, you know, hundreds of lives that, that are at stake here. Go ahead. Thank you, Larry, um, for highlighting you know, the heart of the issue. We live in the tale of two realities. We tale have, of two cities, basically. Yeah, two cities and two realities. We have uh, the most privileged people who happen to own the corporations that own these housing buildings. Bronx, let's take Bronx for example. Over 80% of Bronx residents are renters. Mm -hmm. Bronx is the place where 81% of the residents are renters. So and, we and, are, poor, and poor, correct? Uh, well, yeah, that's why mostly they're renters. So we have a county who, uh, who suffers so long for injustice, for inadequate, and for neglect from the hands of absentee landlords who lives in some of the lo most luxurious neighborhoods and buildings and areas who do not suffer the consequences of heating and every, any kinds of public safety or quality of life issues. That is why the funeral of these 17 individuals were publicized. We invited the media and elected officials in the masjid inside so that the whole world will see the injustice that caused their death and to vow never ever to repeat it again. Mm -hmm. Now, we welcome people to buy buildings. We welcome investors. We welcome people you know, to have tenants. But what we do not tolerate anymore is that you invest on buildings and then you neglect your tenants and you neglect the quality of life and you neglect the basic services that your tenants need mm -hmm. because you can neglect it without facing the consequences. Mm -hmm. Those days are gone. We're going to make sure that the residents of the Bronx, whether they're tenant or whether they're owner occupants, they will get the best services that are available to them and we're going to insist on it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are forming grassroots coalition of community organizers to making sure that we are no longer going to be Paris in such negligible conditions, such mm -hmm. uh, injustice, and such extreme poverty, so that we have to resort to all these heating units in housing development, whether they are NYCHA or whether they are privately own mm. buildings, we're going to make sure that such a tragedy mm -hmm. will not be repeated again without being challenged. And that has started since uh, the fire tragedy. So what, of what type January of, be, be, uh, before we get to um, fire education, uh, what has been some of the donations that have been given, uh, obviously food, clothing, uh, 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 what money for hotels, correct? Um, so, what type of donations have come across since this fire tragedy? You know, from day one, donations have been trickling. You name it, they donated, including toys to making sure that families will not have interruption 
to the children's uh, toy enjoyment. Every single items that are used in our households mm. have been donated to a point where they are in the storage facilities, they are in uh, massages and community centers. New Yorkers came in drove and brought everything you can think of. The family is very grateful. So Most, uh, and, diapers, and also monetarily, di diapers. monetarily, they have been doing so much fundraising online mm. that millions of dollars have already been raised. And I am sure millions of dollars more will be raised because now we have celebrities who are taking the course as they own and making sure that they raise as much money as possible so that the people who lost loved ones will not suffer financially afterward. As, as you know, after the burial, what's left is long-term consequences of losing the loved ones, some of whom were the breadwinners. So we need to be there for them. We need to provide them with all the services that they will need forever and ever. Some of these services are short-term while others are permanent because some people are still in the hospital with uh, you know bad conditions. So we don't know whether they will make it or whether when, if they do make it, under what condition. So we're preparing to making sure that we meet them wherever they are, because New Yorkers came and provided everything that they will need in short term and long term. Um, as far as COVID, uh, 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 as far as fire education, okay, because you had a door that did not work, okay, so. <clears throat> is there any anything that your organization is working with the New York City Fire Department or other fire departments in and around different counties to give uh, fire education uh, or help institute fire education? You know, when it comes to things like this not happening again. You know, New York City is a place where every service that you can think of is there. Mm -hmm. The problem has always been people not knowing the existence of those services and how to utilize them. So because of what happened, we have dedicated our activism toward education for that which can save lives, whether it is a fire safety, whether it is a public safety, whether it is emergency response, you name it, we will collaborate with the government, with private um, agencies, community-based organizations, and experts to making sure that all the residents in the city mm -hmm. get the training that they need so that when such a tragedy happens, at least you can minimize you know, the death and the pain and the suffering because this tragedy was a result of one door that remained open. If that door had closed shut, we will not be uh, funeralizing 17 individuals. Maybe no one would have died or maybe one or two, but because of the door remained open, unfortunately, the building was engulfed <clears throat> with smoke. All the dead died because of smoke inhalation, not the fire, but smoke. I I, yeah, I also understand that um, somebody from Lehman College had passed away. Uh, uh, one of the students had passed away because of this. Um, so explain <clears throat> now. So let's go into what your organization really does. Uh, what does your organization really do for helping communities such as the tragedy that happened, but go into more and what your organization really does. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, during Mayor Bloomberg's uh, uh, administration, uh, we had um, started an organization we call African Rapid Relief Mobilization. African Rapid Relief Mobilization. And 
we had trained so many people into CPR, fire safety, emergency management, and disaster relief services. Unfortunately, you know, uh, the subsequent years, we did not do the right thing by continuing the efforts until this tragedy. Now we have decided that the African Rapid Relief Mobilization that was launched about uh, over 10 years ago will become a centralized organization that deals with all kinds of tragedies, relief services, fire, disaster, you name it, on behalf of the African community in the city. So this Sunday, we're having a meeting with African leaders so that we can actualize the African rapid relief mobilization. As of now, we are working with different organizations from you know, Red Cross to the Office of Emergency Management to uh, Bronze Works and to Community Board 5, various organizations to Gambian Youth Association, Islamic Cultural Center, but we will now centralize all the operations concerning disaster, fire, or, or, or you name it, or emergency to the African Rapid Relief Mobilization. So that something like this happen, the city, you know, the agencies, the affected individual, the community will just go to the African Rapid Relief Mobilization and get the services that are needed on a timely basis. Services that are culturally and religiously appropriate. The do these fires or these tragedies happen? Well, obviously, somewhat it was an accident with, with the space heaters. But um, is this because of lack of education, like with the doors or, you know, lack of education per se? No, no. This was, this was the result of injustice. New York City is the wealthiest city in the nation. New York City is home to more billionaires and millionaires in the nation. For New Yorkers to be hardworking New Yorkers, yet they live in such impoverished condition, this is injustice. Space heating is used by people who do not have adequate heating system in their apartments and homes. And we should not tolerate it anymore because we have the resources to provide to every New Yorker, especially hardworking New Yorkers. So this is the result of injustice and we are going to get to the bottom of it so that we can prevent it. It is happening too frequent. It is happening too deadly and it is happening under our watch and we are not going to allow it to continue to happen. We're going to use this tragedy to making so that justice is done for not only Brock sites, for the residents of New York City at large. It mm -hmm. is all about injustice, whether it is injustice from our government, whether it is injustice from our you know, building owners, or whether it is injustice from the agencies that should really regulate the inequity that exists in our housing. So what you're saying, what you're saying is injustice. That, what you're saying is that people don't care. They just let things happen. Correct? Well, because these people bought these buildings uh, in a very cheap amount, and then they get all the government programs and house New Yorkers, and then they live in luxurious, safest most opulent neighborhoods and communities, and yet they do not give a banana to the people that they are renting because to them, the people are not really human beings. They're just there so that they get the checks from the government or from, from the people. We're going to change that. If you have a tenant, you're going to treat that tenant the same way you treat your loved ones. In terms of discriminating against poor people because they live in such a zip code, or such a, uh, a neighborhood will no longer be tolerated. So basically, go it's a small house after house, building after building, program after program, neighborhood after neighborhood, to making so that every New Yorker, uh, you know, deserves dignity in their housing, mm. safety in their community, and equity in their economic condition. I'm, I'm going. That is what we, uh, what our commitment is, and that is what we're going to be doing in collaboration 
with all the stakeholders, including the government. Now, the class system has been for years, from the Titanic, first class, second class, third class, and then also the Holocaust, ghetto A, ghetto B, ghetto C. Now, you know, during the Holocaust, Jewish people were put into de uh, deplorable conditions. Um, they were fo not fed well, not clothed well, etc. So, do you think, I, I don't mean to say this, but it, your opinion, do you think New York right now is going through its own uh, class system? where the poor people are not, or people in, in general are being put into groups that they're not being treated the right way and they should? Absolutely. You know, we live in the greatest, wealthiest nation on the face of the earth. And in this wealthy nation, we live in the wealthiest city in the nation. The reason why New York is a great place when tragedy happened to people is because of the experience of the Jewish communities. As you said, the ghettos of the Jewish world had given them the ability and the understanding and the experience of not creating these ghettos where people are not regarded as equal, as worthy, as valuable. And because of the experience, the Jewish community has developed humanitarian infrastructure that can be activated at, at a minute's notice. And that's what has happened the moment the fire took place. Mm. The first group from Brooklyn that came was a Jewish group. Guess what they brought? Halal food. So that everybody no. affected will be fed so that they can, you know, at least do go on with their lives and dealing with, you know, with the Red Cross and others. Because hungry people, sleepy people, unfortunately, and people who just come out of a worse tragedy in 30 years, there's nothing they can do right. But when you feed them and then you're there and then you provide guidance, then they can talk and they can talk with relevance. And that's what the Jewish community did. And that comes from the background of suffering injustice for so long to, to a point where they have been able to build the infrastructure, you know, to, to mitigate the pain and suffering. What, what is halal food of, of for tragedy. those? So what is halal food? You mentioned halal food. So what is halal food for those that don't know in terms of like giving resources? Absolutely. Halal food is food that is permissible for Muslims to eat, meaning that there's no alcohol, there is no pork product, and it was, you know, uh, uh, let's say if it had meat, you know, the slaughtering was done in such a merciful manner that the animal was not tortured, the animals was not butchered, and the animal's right was given, and the name of God was proclaimed upon slaughtering the animal. So that is what constitutes halal food. Mm. Okay, so um, we, are, we, we have a little time left. Um, so uh, the... African community that you're a part of, or the Muslim community that you're a part of. Um, now, you're an imam. So, what um, I understand that the, the funeral was held last week or this past week. What, um, and your, your center or the center couldn't hold the amount of people, you know, because you had COVID and you had other. So explain how the community came together with um, the burial of um, these individuals. Absolutely. You know, um, the place where the uh, funeral took place is called Islamic Cultural Center of the Bronx, and it's on 166th Street. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that that uh, place was recently inaugurated. They built it brand new from ground up. They raised over $3 million to build it. So only, it only opened a couple of months ago. But as big as it is, it could not uh, you know, accommodate one third of the people that showed up. Therefore, we immediately work with the city to provide tent, heating tent from block 
to blood. They tanted the whole community with thousands of people in the tent. But mm. even the tent, as huge as they were, there were more people outside the mosque and the tent than they were in. So people came from all areas of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut because everybody, Muslims and non-Muslims, wanted to be part of it, to show their solidarity and to show their fellowship. Mm. The same thing they did with donations. We are so extremely who, grateful who for paid? how New Yorkers handle and, and manage and really so support for the cause that we, we were dealing with right now. So everybody was there almost. Who, who, paid, who paid for the funerals, the city of New York? You know, millions of dollars have already been raised. So the, the, the preliminary payment, you know, was made by the city of New York. But obviously, you know, when everything's said and done, you know, all the expenses will be deducted from what is raised and whatever left will be given to the affected families. Mm. Okay, so um, explain a little bit more about, um, you know, if, if you don't mind, let's go to a slightly other topic. Um, what, since we have a little time left to promote it, what, what exactly is uh, going on? Because you're, you're going to Africa maybe next year on, on a pilgrimage. Um, explain a little bit about that and your African, uh, the African part of your organization. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know if, if, if it's very appropriate to combine the two, but I think they are pretty much interconnected. Mm -hmm. um, this September 3rd, uh, 2022, for the first time, we have been communicating with the African governments asking them to create a week-long open house on the continent, meaning that every African nation on the continent will use September 3rd to September 10th as an African open house. We call it Daylight Africa Week, Daylight Africa Week. And we ask people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all geography, to go to Africa and visit Africa because Africa is the motherland. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, you live in Europe, you live in Asia, you live in on the continent or North America. According to what we know so far, we are all the descendants of Africa. Africa is motherland to blacks and whites and everybody. Mm. But unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of the global citizenry mm -hmm. does not have the knowledge that they need to have about Africa. What they see about Africa is so distorted, it's so one-sided, it's so dark, so gloomy, so empowering. So we tell the government, open the door, let everybody come and see for themselves and see the beauty and see how huge Africa is and see the environment and see the reality. And if some of them are investors, they can look for investment opportunities. If some, some of them are researchers, they can do their research. If some of them are philanthropists, they can see areas where charities are needed, but open Africa on September 3rd for everybody. That's one thing. Number two, we have over 43 million African-Americans. We have over For, 70, You said 43 million? 43 million African-Americans in, in, in the United States. Majority of them, very small percentage of them, have any connection to, to the continent that they came from. So we're also calling it, in addition to calling it Daylight Africa Week, we're also calling it uh, Transatlantic Family Reunification. Transatlantic Family Reunification. So it's going to be powerful. It's going to be huge. But it's going to be very, very beneficial, both to the continent and to everybody in the world. Africa is a place that is mystery to the majority of world citizenry. Mm -hmm. And September 3rd, that mystery will begin to fade away and into you know, the understanding of a continent that every person is part of. Okay. So let's, um, if anyone wants to donate, 
anything in terms of this tragedy, whether it be diapers, food, clothes, where do they turn? Can you give a website? Absolutely. If anybody is donating material, non-monetary, then you can bring it to the Islamic Cultural Center. The address is 371 East 166th Street, Bronx, New York, 10456. Again, Islamic Cultural Center, address is 371 East 166th Street, Bronx, New York, 10456. If somebody's donating money, please go to the mayor's fund. Just Google mayor's fund and donate that. All the monetary donations are being directed to the New York City Mayor's Fund. Thank you. Is there, is there a website for the Islamic Cultural Center? No, there's a website, but uh, the best thing is to use me because I'm the spokesperson and the coordinator, and my number is 718-822-5555. 718-822-5555. Five, 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 five. I am the community coordinator as well as the spokesperson, anything related to the fire tragedy. Okay, well, we would like to thank Shekemu uh, Musadrame <coughs> for joining us on this edition of uh, Able to On Air. For more information on donating, uh, now this is extremely important, for more information on donating anything, clothes, food, uh, 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 um, diapers, baby food, anything materialistic that people can use during this fire tragedy, please um, call Shake Musa Drame at the following number, 718-822-5555. That number, once again, is, is 718-822-5555. Shake Musa Drame is the um, uh, community coordinator and he's also the uh, in, uh, one of the people in charge of Parchester Times and the Muslim Media Corporation. The address again that people can turn, can go? 371 East 166th Street. Okay. 371 East 166, 166th Street, Bronx, New York, 10456. Okay, so for more information on that address to send uh, any packages in relation to the Bronx fire, that's um, 371 East 166th Street. That's 166th Street, Bronx, New York, 10456. The, that uh, address, once again, is 371 East 166th Street, Bronx, New York, uh, 10456, 718 Five five. Shakay Musa Drame, uh, uh, who is a community liaison in terms of this Bronx fire, and uh, we thank you for all the work. I know you're extremely exhausted and you know and recuperating, but we thank uh, Ableton on there. Thanks you for all the work that you've been doing uh, to make this a reality. Uh, because losing a loved one is not a good thing, but prayer and having the community together is extremely important when it comes to these things. Um, so we thank you for helping the community out, and we thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Then On Air. Uh, Arlene is not here today. We would like to thank uh, Shake Musa Drame of the Muslim Media Corporation and all his work that he has done um, for helping these families uh, get back on their feet with housing, uh, food, and many other. Uh, one last thing, is the American Red Cross involved? American Red Cross is involved, Office of Emergency Management involved, and many, many other agencies. But I will end with this. Part of our advocacy is in, uh, is adequate services for individuals uh, with special needs. I just want to let you know that your platform and the people you advocate for are part of our advocacy to making sure that the housing, the logistics, the transportation, the services are also adequate 
for the special needs New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you again for this edition for joining us in this edition of Able Done On Air. Uh, again, uh, one last time, that phone number is 718-822-5555. 718-822-5555. The address uh, is <clears throat> 371 East 166th Street. Now, on the envelope, do they put your name? Well, how do they do it? No, no, no. They can put the fire tragedy or the fire victims. Okay. So, uh, fire victims, um, 371 East 166th Street, Bronx, New York, 10456. That is uh, Bronx, New York, 10456. 718-822-5555. Again, this puts an end to this edition of Able Dinner on Air. Arlene is not here today. Thank you to our sponsors and supporters. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time on the next edition of Able Dinner on Air. Stay safe during a fire, uh, and we must work together to make these tragedies not happen again. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, media editors, New York Parrot online newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.